So let's just dive into this. And when it comes to going over the radio, the radio was sent to me by twowayradios.com. I did some, my research on this particular one and found that it was probably the best one on the market and they offered to send me one. So I took them up on their offer. Both those companies that I mentioned will answer your questions. And Radio Dinity is really good at the small HTs. So you're gonna need HTs and they're really good at telling you which ones you can unlock and which ones you cannot. They're very helpful. Both these companies are very helpful. So this is my shopping list. We're gonna go through it really quick so you can see how I installed it. So along with how I installed it and with my map and that, you'll be able to do this yourself. It's very simple. If you have any questions, ask in the comments and I can answer those questions for you. I did all the research for this. It's top notch. You're gonna have a great radio and it's gonna be grounded correctly and you're gonna be happy. You're not gonna blow yourself up. All right, so really quick, you're gonna need a radio. I recommend getting something that's rather nice because you're gonna be spending money on a lot of things. Coax cable alone is about $160 for a 50 foot run. So you might as well get a nicer radio. Um, so the nicer radio that I got, this one's about $400. This is your Wuxon KG1000G+. Plus. It is a mobile slash base station. It can also be a repeater too. Again, twowayradios.com is the only place to get this and I highly recommend it. It's a great radio. You're gonna need a DC source, power source. You can get that also at twowayradios.com. You just need one that will be able to power this 50 watt station. Pretty simple. These are connected very easily. Where does this get complicated? Uh, Mesa Poloni. This is Mesa Poloni. They sent me all kinds of uh, little advertisements. Pretty cool. Um, they have some really nice uh, gear. Uh, basically, it's this cable. And the cable has these PL259 uh, end connectors that are really, really nice. What makes them nice is you can take them apart. I don't have a pair of pliers on me right now, but they come right apart. They unscrew and you can stick the smaller just line itself through your wall or through a pipe or wherever you need to get it. Um, highly recommend this. This stuff is fantastic. It's flexible and it's very similar to LMR 400. I will not get in that conversation with you, um, but it's rather expensive. You can get it from Italy, which I got it directly from Italy. And I had some custom uh, covers you'll see when you go up there on mine just to make them extra waterproof. And I believe you can also get that from twowayradios.com. They also carry this fantastic coax cable that you can get. That's a jumper for my SWR meter. And you're gonna to need to check your SWR. That's a separate video. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transition outdoors and I'm gonna show you how I ran the coax cable up along my wall, out my wall, and why you need two pieces of coax. So let's go out there, you're gonna need two pieces of coax, meaning I have an 18 foot section and then I have a 22 foot section that goes up to my antenna. Those two sections meet and where they meet, you put your lightning arrestor. So we're gonna go look at the lightning arresting system first and we'll go from there. We'll go from there to grounding and then I'll take you up on the roof and you can see the antenna itself with my J-pole that I bought. So let's just do that right now. Okay, so as we transition, all right, you have the coax coming out the wall and it's coming out your wall right here. And then it's gonna to go to your lightning arresting system, okay? And that's gonna go in between your two sections of coax like I explained. It's also gonna have a 10 gauge wire, okay? And that 10 gauge wire is gonna go down to your grounding rod which is strategically located. Um, you also wanna protect this. I don't, it hasn't come in yet, but I have a cover, um, some coax cover for that. Cause you don't want any wires rubbing up against your wall, for instance, right? And rubbing and ruining the insulation. So you wanna cover this and eventually I'm gonna secure it to this all the way down. Okay, so we've ran that 10 gauge all the way down and it's going to come right here to your grounding rod this is your eight foot grounding rod you can get these at home depot they're about 30 bucks they're not very expensive and i have a sh youtube short having me drive this down it takes about 10 minutes after a rain 
goes right down into the ground very easy even in the hard California dirt. And that's going to go right here on one of those clamps that you can find on my link. And so we don't have to revisit this. Let's just start with the grounding rod or the grounding cable. This is 14 gauge and this is um, also you can find this on my Amazon link. You want to get it um, cladded and that's going to be a separate clamp that that attaches to and that's going to go all the way up and it's going to attach to the bottom of your antenna and right there on the bottom of your antenna you're going to have another clamp that clamps it to your antenna okay so let's go up on the roof and see how that's connected before we go up on the roof i want you to see how high that is okay so we we have a bunch of one-story homes around here okay you just want to get up over the one-story homes all right so you get a clear line of sight now i'm at about, my elevation i think it's about 600 feet and um down to the valley i'm actually above the valley but i'm not up on a mountain okay so i'm not up on the foothills like that but i am it is mostly a downhill slope um all the way for miles and uh yeah and i can still hit those repeaters Okay, so here we are looking at the antenna. Again, I have a link for this antenna support. Um, and then I also put um, some guy wires and it's attached with bolts to my fascia. I have a thick fascia though, so you might wanna do some extra support, but I have some, I got a pretty thick fascia board. It's about that thick. It's not like the thinner fascia boards that a lot of people have. Um, so you might wanna consider that. Um, these are your ferrite clamps, and I also have a link for those. You want three of these, or you want to do some looping here, which you don't want to do looping. Just get your ferrite clamps, put three of those on your J-pole right there, and it connects right there. Now, this right here, I have some tape. This is, um, I forget the name of the tape, but it is in my Amazon link. Again, I'm kind of forgetting stuff because I am kind of high up here, and uh, you want to water it's going to waterproof everything. Oh, and this is, this came from Messi Poloni like this. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Real waterproof, real tough. And that's how you get it. Now let's look around. You can see how high I am. I'm not really, you, know, you got a few homes out there that are a little bit higher than mine, but in general, you have a clear, you know, clear shot of everything around you, as you can see. And that's something you want to consider. This is high enough. Once you start going higher, you know, it gets a lot more expensive. So, you, you know, you get a pole, antenna, whatever, you're looking at three, $400. This setup right here uh, cost me about 45 bucks, um, everything, okay? And here's a little map of what I did, so you guys can kind of see what we just looked at, just like as, as a review. So you're gonna have a, you're gonna have two clamps down here, one for the grounding, one for the uh, lightning arrestor. You have your lightning arrestor mounted just before it goes into your building. And that way, it protects all this coax, all this coax right here. Um, and that kind of gives you you got your ferrite clips right here that I pointed out. You get your J-pole antenna. You got a grounding clamp right here on the bottom of your um, structure, which goes down to your eight foot grounding rod. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, expect to see more from me.